road to success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening Caring Partner. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, our guest is Nani Cross of Kitengela Glass Studio. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It's really an honor to meet you. Very kind. Tell us how your journey started. We started 40 years ago and um, we started making glass because of the, it, it's so expensive to, to buy glass and to bring glass in and to import glass. In fact, any importing is still expensive. So, yeah, so we decided that to use old glass was better than making new or importing. What ignited the idea of recycling glass? We recycle glass because we make new glass and because somebody had to do it. It's um, because if you can't import it, make it. And you've achieved that. I and mean, it, everybody worked, yeah. knows about Kitengela glass. And they come from America and they say, my house is full of Kitengela glass, make me some more. And they come from all over the world saying that. Besides the glass, what else, what else do you produce? We do everything. We do pottery, we do a lot of metal work, which we need as well also for the, for our, uh, for the glass itself. And uh, we do felting now, which I'm very proud of, made from raw wool and also quite still unknown. Some people do it, I'm glad to hear. You can do anything from hats to shoes to shawls. In fact, I should have put a shawl on for my... Uh, for the, the felting and of course teaching and teaching art and uh, artists from all over uh, whether and what I came from was the mural side you know I painted murals a lot of murals and we're still painting murals I have a young man here at the moment will be painting a mural at the at the Steiner school next door the Rudolf the Waldorf school we're painting an over life-size mural of Mandela and I think that's going to be really great fun for, for the students. And we do organic farming. And I do believe in clean farming, not all this pesticide. We do bees, of course, biogas and solar. Why choose this location for this studio? It chose me and we were here and the, the land was, was for sale in those days. And, um, and, and, um, and, and I needed a home and I needed to do something. Um, further with, um, well, my kids need to go to school. I need to, I need to make some money as well. Take us through the process of creating such beautiful glass, stained glass, uh, for example, tables. You make a cartoon with um, whatever you're doing, whether it's your figure or an animal or a landscape. And then you, each piece has, a, uh, has, a, has to be cut and you cut it and then you paint it if you need features or hands or, or if it's an animal, uh, any other features. Then you fire it in a kiln where the paint sinks into the top layer of the glass and stays there forever with any luck, if it doesn't break. <laughs> and then you take it out and then you put lead cames around it. And the lead gets then gets cut at the right end and gets soldered at the bits, the whole thing gets Putty it over with a putty gets washed on top of it, cleaned up, a frame put around it if it's to hang and you hang it. Uh, where do you get your glass from? We try and make most of the glass ourselves. Mm. Um, although we still import some because the colors of what we make is not as strong as what is sometimes asked for. I have a rolling machine. We put, um, we take a, a daub of hot glass, molten glass, we put it in the rolling machine, we roll it, comes out as a sort of pancake. Yeah. And that then sits in the annealer, which is the part of the uh, furnace of the oven that cools the glass down to only 800 to 500 degrees and has to sit there overnight and come back. Mm. Next morning you pull it out and then you can use it for that. Do you buy the glass from people, for example? Or no, we Just don't in case buy somebody them. has a, a lot of glass that they want to recycle, do they, can they bring them to you so you can buy from them? We have bottle banks all over town. Everybody puts it in the bottle bank. And um, uh, occasionally when I have a car, then I'll go and collect them. But no, I certainly don't buy. I have more bottles than I can deal with. And um, I think people should pay me for taking their bottles. It cleans the environment also. Absolutely. And as I said before, you can do 
um, you can do so much with bottles. You don't have to melt them down. You can crush them and use them for, uh, for cocotta. You can make whole bottle banks. Because you say some of these pieces must be imported. The, gla the stained glass pieces must be imported. So who did you initially market to? People started knowing about us, and um, and people knew me beforehand from the from the mosaic side, uh, from the mural side. You know, when I did all the big walls, mm. so they came and they said, um, "This we need this wall or that wall," and I said, "Don't do walls anymore. You have to take stained glass now." So <laughs> that's how more or less it came. It has been word of mouth for you. Yeah, pretty much. I've hardly ever advertised as such. I wouldn't know how. I've got one ongoing advertisement in an international glass magazine which tells people to come to Africa, come and study glass, work with us, both um, you know the glass side and the, and the farm side. And, uh, but I don't think I ever get any answers there. We have one, one uh, outlet at Galleria in the craft market there and um, Spinner's Web very kindly give us a corner and otherwise people have to just come here. And basically what we do and, and hope, try to live on is the commissions, and that's big walls. So if any of your viewers um, know about the um, museum wall, the International Museum, is a big wall in the front there. Mm. Then there's uh, walls in a lot of the banks and, um, and churches, of course. Consolata have a very nice thing. Um, the Way of the Cross is there. And... Um, yeah, that's basically where I hope people will see and know and call me when they need us. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Do not go away. Did you know you can now send money from M-Pesa to an equity bank account? To send money from M-Pesa to your equity bank account, go to your SIM toolkit, select M-Pesa, select Lipana M-Pesa, Select Pay Bill, select Enter Business Number, Enter Pay Bill Number 247247, Enter the Equity Bank Account Number, Enter Amount, Enter your M-Pesa PIN and confirm the transaction. You will then receive an SMS notification that the transaction is complete. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, our guest is Nani Cross mm. of Kitengela mm. Glass mm. Studio. Nani, what does it take to run a business such as yours? Well, find enough money to build a furnace <laughs> and to buy the gas, then collect lots of empty bottles of which you can have plenty from me, I have enough, and start or go, go and learn to blow glass. And you can do that here with us, we, we do teach. Um, but there's lots of other things you can do with glass. Like we said before, you can use it for all sorts of things. You don't have to blow. Yeah. But if you want to do it as a blowing business... Blowing is expensive, you say, yes, because of the it's gas. Expensive. And, um, but as a business, it really isn't a business, you know. It's an art form. So most of my people here are all artists or if they haven't been artists before they started they certainly come out as artists because you need to and artisans you need to learn to what can you make out of this bottle you know we can cut it here we can turn it this way or that way we can crush it and use it for cocotta or we can hang it from the top there and and make it be a wind chime um, there's so many things, and of course stained glass is only one of them, making windows for churches. Mm. Or for anybody for that matter. Or then my, my later, not latest, but later um, technique, which is dal de ver blocks, blocks of, 
of molten recycled glass set into concrete for big walls, which can be, uh, which you see lots of in town. We've made really quite a few by now. And in all over East Africa, really. There's Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, I've made them. I've, I've shown our glass everywhere and used it. What would you say um, would be your challenges? Money. I mean, if it's money you want, don't go into glass or art for that matter. Although some of the artists now um, helping the artists and they actually are making some sort of living. I would like to remind your, your public that for the last um, is it six years now? Yes, for the last six years I've been bringing out the Arts Diary, which shows an, an artist a week and there's 64 weeks a year, I think, isn't it? And, it yeah. <laughs> and they're all they're there and they're featured and they can show everybody what they do and how they do it and, um, and then can be reached through the diary. So that, yes, that is, I'm, I'm very proud of the diary, but don't ask me, everything is voluntary there. I mean, we do, we do it for for the goodness and for the for the will and for the love of art and the artists and the youngsters as much as some old ones. How many people do you work with? It depends. It's, uh, it's between 80 and 40. It depends on if we have got lots of good jobs, then I, I'll call some back that are waiting in the wings. But of course, it's the animals on the farm and, the, and we do have uh, some uh, visitors and they need to be looked after all the time if they're there. Mm. But the art side, mm. yeah, I have my steady, my, my group of people who are reliable and and trained and very good at it. You talked about your the school, the, the vocational school and the different schools that you have, yeah. uh, not only in Kitengela but um, within Nairobi. They've become independent, okay. they've grown up. But my school here is, is, is still my school because it really is, was the first baby of the Waldorf school or the Rudolf Steiner school. And what are the charges? Well, the Rudolf Steiner school, it's mostly sponsored children. A lot of poor children and uh, refugee kids who really can't anything, do anything. And, they, and, and we, have, uh, we do sponsoring all over the world, a lot in Germany. Um, Europe and some in America and here, of course, I have so many sponsor kids. What would you like your legacy to be? As trying to keep the environment as beautiful and as clean and as good for us and our children as possible. And of course, yeah, and teach the children something that is useful for them and makes them into good people. Yeah, even if it takes puppetry to teach them. And of course, that's what vocational school is all about, to teach them to use their beautiful hands. There isn't a child or a youngster in Kenya that hasn't got a wonderful skill. Don't tell me anybody says, oh, I can't draw, or I can't model. Try it and you'll see. Most wonderful artists in everyone. Try, do something. Yeah. You're Thank welcome. you so much, Nani, for inviting us You're welcome. and for allowing us in your space. We really have enjoyed ourselves and lunch quite a bit. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. Equity Group profits before and after tax increased by 18% growth for the half year ending June 2016. Releasing the results at Equity Center in Nairobi, Equity Group CEO Dr. James Mwangi said profit before tax rose to 14.2 billion shillings. Both rides have grown at 18% and heavily driven as we sell uh, by growth 14% of the own book and 44% growth. Uh, in uh, investment in government securities, driving a combined interest of the two lines uh, by 35%.
Dr. Mwangi attributed the improved performance to the successful execution of an innovative business strategy, the Equity 3.0. The cumulative banking transactions increasing by uh, over the year increasing by 225 percent while the value of those transactions has increased by 500 and 25 percent. Dr. Mwangi illustrated how the bank transaction business is moving from physical channels to digital channels. Transaction at the automated teller machines and the branch declined by 17 and 12 percent respectively. Uptake of the mobile channel grew by 115 percent with over 2.1 million clients having registered on the Equitel platform. Indeed, the convenience and ease of accessing credit through Equitel Mobile Channel saw the number of loans disbursed increase by 308%. That 308%, 82% of all the disbursements, 3.558 million loans have been disbursed through Equitel. Equity Group customer base crossed the 10 million accounts mark in the period with deposits hitting a high of 259 billion shillings. Very excited that we now have reached the tipping point when you, you reach 11 million customers. Now you feel you have almost at a tipping point because cross sell can really significantly grow the bank. A review of the top banks in the world revealed that Equity has improved ranking to the 8th best bank in the world on return on assets and the fastest growing large bank in Africa. Last year we were now number 916, uh, if those who can remember the previous year we were number 999, we are now down to number 835 and uh, if you look at uh, this report uh, we are ranked uh, the fastest growing large bank in Africa. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. This week, we're honored to meet John Deuri, a lecturer at Riara University and also a social entrepreneur. Karibu sana to our show. Thank you so much, Catherine. I know as a lecturer, you must uh, have a wider knowledge than most of us. And of course, you are also a social entrepreneur. When you say you're a social entrepreneur, what does that mean? Just for our, our audience to be clear. Thank you so much for having me, Catherine. A social entrepreneur is somebody who looks at uh, societal problems from a different perspective. So that now you are keen to solve the challenges that are in society and you create a social impact. And as a lecturer, what, 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 what is your department? My department is the School of Business. So my areas, I handle uh, entrepreneurship, uh, management, and marketing, those diverse areas. I've been doing that for the last 17 years. John, that you would be the right person to answer a lot of these questions from our audience. We do this every other month. The first question is, one of our viewers wants to know whether culture is an important part of carrying business. Interesting. Thank you, Catherine. It's a very interesting question, and uh, it has many facets. But to just um, bring it closer home, um, there is a famous saying that says, when you go to Rome, you do as the Romans do. do. There is a concept we call sweat analysis. Uh, culture falls in there because the sociocultural aspects of any community are very key. For example, um, if you want to sell fish, you must ask yourself, do those people who stay in that environment uh, eat fish as a delicacy. If they don't, it's a cultural element. So when you introduce fish, it will take you longer to convince them to try eating fish. Maybe they don't look at fish as something edible. So your business will have a, a higher chance of failure if you miss out the concept of culture. Okay, this one is from um, Cordera. It's from Bill Clinton Mabumba. He's asking, 
He says, I kept rabbit at home in large numbers, but it didn't help since I had no good market. How can you help? That's part one. Two, I, I also had a plan of transporting sardines, daga, and omena to Nairobi, but I'm only having one customer who doesn't need it much. Is this idea beneficial? Um, we, so part one, yes. we'll start with part one about the rabbits. Rabbit farming is growing in uh, Kenya, in the region. Why? Because rabbits provide a very good source of uh, meat that to some extent they say is cholesterol free. And therefore rabbit farming has grown leaps and bounds. We have organizations that help rabbit farmers. There is one that is uh, in uh, Nairobi. So possibly we can even uh, give uh, the young man contracts of that. But the second thing is that for every business, you must find your market. Uh, if you begin it the other way around, it gives you a challenge. Because then you have the rabbits, you don't have the market. Yeah. The other thing is refrigeration. Sometimes you can slaughter and refrigerate so that when you find the market you are able to, you are able to deliver. But uh, there are places where, uh, within Nairobi where they buy lots of rabbit meat, possibly the young man might need to come down here to Nairobi and look for rabbit farmers. The second thing also is to look at the dietary habits of that environment. Um, are people uh, willing to begin trying rabbit meat? Are there places where people eat uh, possibly fish and other types of meat where they are willing to explore with rabbit meat? That can be a beginning because you can create um, a market for your rabbit meat. But usually in business, you first look for the market and then you begin producing. If you produce and then you look for the market, sometimes you can have a big challenge. Okay, and then he's also planning to transport like the sardines, the daga, and the omena to Nairobi. And he only has one customer who doesn't need it much. That's a good beginning. Is this idea beneficial? I think the idea is beneficial. Um, possibly the way to look at it again, the good thing with that is that he, possibly he'll be buying from the local market or something like that is to ask the, the current customer to recommend at least three or four other people who usually buy these kind of things. Again also, he may have to come down, uh, come and see that customer and look for places where these particular, uh, you know, these particular items are bought. One place like that is Ikomba Market, huge market for this kind of uh, uh, product. So I think it's a viable idea, it's an excellent idea, and he should pursue it further and now begin to have uh, forums with those who buy so that he can increase the number of people who are buying. Also talk to the current uh, customer. Why is that customer not willing to buy more stocks? Is it the credit facilities? What is it? Is it the market? Explore ways of partnering with that person so that they can increase uh, possibly the amount of uh, these sardines and omena they buy. John, the next one is from Edwin from Kiricho. He's asking, he has started his business, he's done his business three times and all have failed. And this is between February and May this year. He has used all his money over 40,000 K and now he has nothing. He wants to know what has gone wrong. It's a very good question from Edwin from Kericho. Um, the, maybe the best way of looking at it is there are lessons from failure because failure is a stepping stone to success. So he's asking a very critical question for most of the people who are starting businesses, budding entrepreneurs, potential entrepreneurs, and new entrepreneurs. Because they say 80% of businesses that are started in the first year fail. Yes, yes, yeah. They give those kind of statistics. Sometimes they are neither here nor there mm -hmm. because there are many reasons of failure. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can begin with, uh, uh, if we had an idea of what kind of business, that would have really helped us because there are certain businesses, depending on where you are doing them, they have a higher rate of uh, success or failure. So possibly we could ask Edwin to give us more information on uh, the kind of business, the target market, and so on and so forth. But having said that, there are many reasons why businesses fail. It could be because uh, you have underestimated the needs of the customers. It could be because of your customer service. It could be because of location. There are a million and one reasons why a business uh, will fail. So for this particular case, we can only speculate yeah. because we don't have the critical information that we need from Edwin. Vera from Bugoma is asking, why do I get business ideas? Interesting, Vera. Thank you for that question, Vera. Bungoma is a, is a big county um, with lots of business ideas. Now, sometimes you need to go to the market 
marketplace. There's a huge market in Bungoma. Go into that marketplace and you make sure you go early. For example, you can be there by 8 o'clock. Spend your time observing the activities in the market. The, the trucks bringing in produce, the trucks taking out produce. The amount of uh, fruits, the amount of food, the amount of uh, the, the number of people who come in there. And then talk to one or two people there. Find out the kind of business they are doing. That will be a rich source of business idea. Sometimes you get ideas by observing the way people carry out their business. So that would be my first advice. Go into your local market and look around. See how many people are coming to buy fruits. See how many people are eating fruits uh, in that particular environment or the kind of food serves that move in that market. That can be a very rich because some people say you can never wrong, go wrong with food. Final question is from Cynthia who's watching from Kahawa. She completed her high school in 2014 and due to lack of school fees, she's back home. So she's asking, please help her with what she can do to make her life successful. It's a very sad scenario where you find uh, our young people uh, at home, they are sitting at home, they are sitting on their gifts and talents. How will your gifts present you before kings and queens when you are seated? Because gifts make room for people. What I would advise Cynthia is to get out of that uh, environment where she's in and go out there to the marketplace. Look for organizations that are willing to take in volunteers and volunteer her services. There are several. You can volunteer in, for example, places like St. John's Ambulance. Um, you can volunteer at the Red Cross. There are many avenues that are possible. And you see now what you'll be doing. One, you'll be opening up for other networks. you meet many other young people. As you engage, that's where you get to hear of what other people are doing. You get new ideas, you get impetus, and also you are encouraged. Where your hope was down, it's lifted up. But as long as you are staying at home, sometimes you almost look like the world has come to an end, yet opportunities are out there. But they will not find you at home. You must find them out there. So we are encouraging Cynthia, get out of the home. So ideas are several. We are encouraging our young people. Come out of your comfort zone. Come out of the home environment. Even walking out there. Sometimes, even walking is better than being in a matatu. Because way. you get yeah. to see several things. You get to interact with people out there. You see what other people are doing. There are some brilliant ideas out there. And you can upscale some of those ideas. But don't sit on your talents. Thank you, John, for really taking the time to come and answer a lot of these questions. From young people, old people, it doesn't matter where they are. We thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Catherine, for having me. I want to see how we can help our young people. So thank you for opening up this forum. Thank you for the work you are doing for our young people. Thank you for watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. We do encourage you to continue writing to us, sharing your comments, and if you have any queries, we do have the experts who come every week and are ready to answer your questions. Do have a blessed week. to success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank, you are listening, caring partner.